Buenas tardes a todos y a todas y bienvenidos a la... Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the security venture uh, shortlisting. We have here members of the jury, colleagues. Cyber Security Ventures is an incentive project for the development of the ecosystem of cybersecurity. This time we had uh, 36 uh, projects submitted, 15 of them were shortlisted, they underwent an interview. And then, oh sorry, out of those 25, uh, we have our finalists today. Out of the 15 projects, uh, only, well, 14 of them have shown up. So today is the most important moment because we are selecting the last uh, 10 uh, projects that move on to the final stage. So we have 10 projects to be accelerated and four reserves. So now I'd like to introduce you today to the URE. We are lucky, very lucky to have them with us. But I'd, we'd like to thank them for their presence. We have Rana Swartz, which is the head of uh, Strategic Alliances, the 11 Path, which is a unit of Telefonica and Cybersecurity. Rana, uh, thank you very much for being here. Sergio Malinelli, who is the Business Development uh, Director. Javier Benito Bilbao. How are you doing, Javier? He's the head of Spanish node of AIT Digital and also business development in digital infrastructure and fintech. Welcome, Javier. Nestor Ganusa, Colonel, uh, Lieutenant Colonel of the Army. He is the head of the Joint Cyber Defense Command. Thank you very much, Nestor. Juan Revuelta. Director of Investment of uh, Swamlat Fund. Hello. Welcome, Juan. Thank you very much for being here. Jose Valiente, founder and president of the Industrial Cybersecurity Center. Uh, Jose, uh, welcome and thank you. Jorge Barbillegas, Director of Infrastructure, Health and uh, ICTs of ITEX. Thank you very much for being here. Alberto Moratín. Institutional Relation of ENISA. It is the European Network of Information pushing and promoting SMEs. Thank you very much. Maria Victoria Seco, DG of Telecommunication of the Regional Government of Castile and Leon. Thank you for being here and being a member of our jury. Mar Lopez Hill, head of the Office of Security and Cyber Security of the National Department of Security, Secretary of the Council of Cyber Security of the Presidency of the Government, Mar, welcome and thank you for being here. Andres Jesus, Technical Counselor of the Cyber Security Department, Ministry of Presidency of the Government, Andres, welcome. Luigi Rebuffi, Secretary General of the European Cyber Security Organization, Luigi, welcome. Raúl García Esparza, head of the ICT and transport, the CDT director, CDTI director. So now I'll briefly uh, explain to you what this is about and before we give the floor to our protagonists, to uh, the entrepreneurships. I'm going to call the companies by alphabetical order. They will pick up a number from uh, uh, bag. We have uh, the our mascot, Botillo, and that will be the order of intervention. They have five minutes for the presentation and have five minutes to take questions from the jury to clear up any questions. We have a small problem. So a company submitted his uh, project in Apple format. So therefore, that company should be the last one to uh, give the presentation. So the other participating startups, do they, do they have any problem in having this company, this startup, uh, being the last one to present? OK, so if there are no problems, OK, we start. All right, so in a flux, that's the company who will present in the last place. Okay, we take out that number, we will put these the remaining 13 numbers in that bag, and then, okay, I will call you in alphabetical order, and then you will pick up a number. 
and then okay we'll give the bag away as a gift at the end As I was saying, I will call you in alphabetical order. ANSYS Cybersecurity. ANSYS. Next company. Center of Cybersecurity for Drones. Number three, next company, Duology Security. Eleven. Next, ENSO tests. That was number 10. Next, iron chip. Number 8. Next company, Kinetic Technologies. That was number five. Next company, Kimatio. Number two, next, new rallers. Number seven, next, secure kits. Number 12, as company, Simark Software. <laughs> Number one, as company, Smart Fans. Number four, that's Batman, CTEC Digital. Well, it's either a six or a nine. Sinavis. So, okay, without further ado, let us start with CMARC uh, software. Five minutes for your pitch, five minutes for questions from the jury.
perdón. Eh, soy Jorge Marcos, CTO de Simarks. Hello, my name is Jorge eh, Marcos, CTO of Simarks. Una empresa de tecnología We are a Spanish technology company. We develop cybersecurity software. We are focusing eh, at endpoint uh, security. No We are focused on uh, privilege uh, management, but at the level of the app application, not at the level of the user. How will this start? Well, it all started back in 2012, where we were all the time formatting PCs in the family, and then we decided that something had to be changed. And then we could see is that all the PCs had been working as admins for two months. They needed fixing in two months. So we reformulated the idea in 2012. And then we adapted that to the business environment. So this concept is not a new concept. This is referred to by the uh, Americans, but principle of least uh, privilege was born together with Windows XP. Privilege that counts started back in where we have uh, Windows XP and we are still suffering them. These privilege that counts are involved in most of the malware that we find on the internet. You assert and Gartner have been advising to be very careful with this type of accounts. So if this is the case, why we continue to act in the same manner while companies have not implemented these principles? Well, first of all, because uh, security always clashes with productivity. The higher the level of security, the lower our productivity and vice versa. So for instance, asking a VIP to go to the intranet, to start a firm, to ask for an uh, count as an administrator, he would say no. So therefore, management of applications, this is one of the things that we uh, often gives out a higher number of uh, privileges. So what would be the ideal solution? Well, the ideal solution is not to have users as administrators, that only some applications could be run through administrator uh, uh, privileges, and those applications that are run under well, restricted privileges and that only users can install authorized applications. And this is what we do at Simarx. Simarx, through a proprietary technology for privilege management at the level of application, allows all users to be ordinary users. Therefore, we no longer have problems with administrators, and our focus is one of getting rid of administrators. And how do we manage exceptions through whitelists? The authorized applications are the only ones that are run with elevated privileges, also great list for the output applications to the internet, which have always, always restricted, and then also through blacklists, uh, where we block some apps. And then another solution that we offer is portal for applications where only those uh, application, applications with the portal are authorized to be installed. Also, uh, software for ransomware, allowing us to intercept in real time cryptography, or also an app uh, with restricted access to some applications or to some protected folders. That is to say, we work at the level of the application, so therefore the very same 
flashing, we can have some apps with uh, access to the network and others without access to the network. And what is our market? Our market is a cross-sectional market. That is to say, any segment, any sector, as long as there is a, as long as it runs on Windows. So our solutions are already uh, available for B2B markets, and they have well, they can be, they are global. We only need uh, Windows, and we are now working on the B2C markets. So what are our competitors? Well, if we can refer to them as competitors. Oh. That's the end of my time. Okay, five minutes is over. Now we have five minutes from the members of the jury for questions. Feedback de clientes estáis facturando. So do you have any feedback from your customers? Estáis facturando. Are you having any turnover, which is your financial forecast? Well, well, we did. Our products has been adopted by early adopters, which have been very welcomed. So next year we will be signing contract with big companies. Our customers so far are small in size. Uh, local authorities, but uh, our solution has been very much liked. We introduced it to Telefonica and to other big companies. So some people at Telefonica said that had they had our solution in place before WannaCry, they would not have been impacted by WannaCry. So I'd like my question is similar to the previous question. Can you please give us uh, estimates of your turnover? So um, how would you contribute? Or how would you benefit if you were to be shortlisted or if you were to be selected? Considering the level of development of your project, how would you benefit from being selected? Well, the company has started to commercialize to market the product as of a, well, last April, so the turnover up until now is 30,000 euros, and benefit, the benefit of joining the program is growing, growing as a company. So that was in my last slide, that is to say growing as a company, developing our human team, and developing our sales force, our marketing team, so that we can uh, address and reach the Spanish markets and international markets, as I say, because we are very, uh, we have we have significant international components. So two questions. So the team, who are the members of the team, and then in terms of internationalization, how would you approach international markets? Well, the team, as you can see on the slide, well, it's not anymore. It's made up by five people plus collaborators. So fixed uh, five people on a fixed basis, and then we have collaborators for marketing and for sales. And then in terms of approaching the international market, that's why we are looking for a partner, a mentor, or financial help to reach the European market. Hello, do you take for granted or there is an hypothesis that your white, black and grey lists are easier to manage than the rest of white lists of other endpoints in terms of security? Why is that so? Well, the story is that so you have told us about white, black and grey lists. Other endpoint solutions also use the very same system. We know that they are very difficult to manage. You said that your system makes this manage Management easy. So there is a differentiating value there. I'd like to hear more about it. Could I please show slide for 30 seconds so that I can answer that question? So that slide would be enough to answer that question. Mira. 
aquí hay un usuario que no tiene privilegios This is a user who is no privileges, he wants to change the time, deny access to the system, we start the tool, active directory, notice how simple it is, how easy it is to drag it and to create a rule that says that app is can only be run if you are an administrator. So the next time the app will be run, the user will not be aware of it, okay, we will change the time with no problem, you don't need any to log in and out, okay, you only need to track, okay, this makes it much easier than no sé si the solution of our competitors. I hope I have answered your question. Any other questions? Thank you very much for your presentation. Kimatio, Fernando Mateus y Fernando Anitua. Fernando Mateus y Fernando Anitua. Hola, buenas tardes. Soy Fernando Mateus. Good afternoon. My name is Fernando Mateus, CEO. Problem that we define as sometimes the greatest threat. At a, in a residential area, maybe someone who is around. According to studies, 56% of all companies think that the second source of an attack would come uh, would be their employees. Of all those attacks or insider incidents, may be caused by revenge, financial interest, but then we have non-malicious users, insiders, and without being malicious, malicious can cause some costly events. Negligent employees, those that are undertrained, uh, third party people, there are many types. So the solution, as we understand it, would be Kimadia in internal protection. We bring together psychology and technology in order to produce an analysis and risk prevention platform, bringing together high-level psychology levels together with machine learning and big data. Predicting behavior is paramount for the solution, and we also assess the risk based on the bio biological features of the personality, based on static and dynamic factors both. Our platform sets up a communication with the employee, starts a, a conversation, and in that conversation through a survey first, and then on a chatbot, and then chatbot and baseline, it identifies which are the features for that person, both static and dynamic, a stress level, sense of belonging. And so this, together with the department profiling, knowing whether they deal with confidential, private information, in the end, we will get an insider risk percentage and the odds that they belong to each types of insider. So, the platform brings us a department-based dashboard with a risk analysis for each department, and for each department we see detailed all the employee risks. So we can use a department-employee-based risk uh, ranking so that we can have preventions for the employee and the department as well. So it's not patrolling other kinds of information, but that's all it is. This solution reduces risks, avoids incidents, it is a support for regulators' uh, 
eh, demands that that's compliant, it gives priority to higher risk users and gives calm to the company regarding the human team, peace of mind. So this is our team. We are a senior team. We are professionals and this is a multidisciplinary team with different fields of expertise, cybersecurity, psychology, human resources and of course technology. We also have a group of uh, consultants, uh, high-level consultants, uh, world recognition in the fields of psychology, legal, finance, cyber security and uh, globalization. This business model is based on three different elements. Intro edition, where we assure there is low friction, so clients can test it in a very simple way, limited just to limiting just the number of employees or some features, then full edition, including the full potential, potential, and we see that it is a number of users dependent, and then full edition plus e-learning, where on top of recommendations to reduce the risk for every user, we can train them in different fields such as awareness about uh, cybersecurity. According to our forecast, on this, uh, during the second year we will reach break-even and we, throughout the first year we'll be focusing on the uh, IOS 35 companies and ongoing market. Challenges. High levels team, proprietary algorithms for insider risk and human affinity. We reach agreements with Telefonica and 11 Paths for piloting, GoNet for market uh, canvassing, and we've won several competitions. Five minutes for jury questions. Me gusta, hola. Me saber si tienen algún tipo de datos do you have any data on effectiveness of your solution, whether for higher risk people detection within the company, or maybe effectiveness of solutions, or maybe a piece of advice given leading to a change of behavior or attitude? We are running the tests now, the functioning tests now, without the platform, just psychology. This is all about performance, and this is all about results. In order not to dwell on that, to summarize it, we check the questionnaires and service that measure the features that we will mark as risk indicators on site, that's for people. And the power, this is the seeding phase, and the power, you see it when we have hundreds and thousands of users, that's when big data and machine learning enlighten the solution up to now. It will be just psychological signs, and from here onwards, it will become something else. There was a client who said he, they would not love to have the solution, even if it didn't work. Because just the fact of having people know that this is an active tool, we see that that an insider behavior willingness will go down by 80%. Hi. My question is for data privacy, because I understand that the tool will use some personal data, some of them are highly private. Have you considered it as part of your project? How do you match it? We knew this would be a question. So. We have an impressive legal team. We have um, a professor from uh, for legal law and penal law, and they give us the legal shield we need and what our clients and our client employees need. And that's the solution that professor has worked with Indra and Telefonica, and she, he is part of the compliance committee at Telefonica as well. He is a professor of criminal law in the University of Madrid. Any more questions? Congratulations on your innovation. What about your business strategy? Are you clear on the industries? Have you segmented your your target market? What about the destination for the platform? And what's the message you will be sending to the decision maker? Well, the initial approach would be companies 
that have an intensive use of property, intellectual property related information or high risk banking, telecom, etc. So for us, we would like to ourselves face and tackle the first sales live in Spain before scaling it up and globalizing it. We want to prove that we can work locally in Spain. We want to be present in the most significant IBEX companies and then together with a partner take the international leap. We've been in contact with Bakinter KPMG Telefonica. Accenture. So we were welcomed and uh, there, there was high interest, but still a long way ahead of us. So, question is, what do you think the accelerator can bring to you? So if you join the accelerator, can, what can it give you? What, what's the goal? Why are you part of the program? Well, this is the only slide we skipped. We didn't have the time, but we've moved from serving in psychology and then with the universities we've reached an agreement with, especially uh, University Autonoma in Madrid, with which uh, we have a research program in place, that psychology, but then we've also worked on prototyping to see how we interact and the minimal via feasible product. Next we have the luncheon, the kick-off. And for us, having this uh, in Zibu stamp or certificate, that's what we need. That's what we need to move on, their endorsement. Thank you very much. Third project, we have uh, the drone cybersecurity project. Center, rather. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank the organization for giving us the chance to bring here and show you this project from the Drone Cybersecurity Center. So we brought two examples here to remote control airborne vehicles. Both are GA. I guess some of you have seen some of these clients over urban areas or maybe residential areas or probably some village, town or uninhabited area. With the new drone law being passed, drones will be allowed, allowed over residential areas and there are large companies and many companies such as Google, Facebook or Amazon or Apple, they have their goggles and they've invested heavily trying to carry out projects so that all those devices can fly over residential areas or urban areas with different utilities such as uh, carriers or 3G technology together with this uh, new ardent expansion of the drone sector there are some innate risks such as drones flying over schools or coastlines protests or even critical infrastructures which might entail some risks for people such as soccer stadiums embassies institutional buildings etc so so our solution, what we put forward, is a product, this is three stretch, we have basic 
Plus and Pro Sidron. This is an APP state basic one, Sidron. It is free of charge for citizens mainly, where the citizen can detect, can have a map and detect the digital license of the drone that's flying with all the information so that they feel confident and at ease and have plenty of information to know and have plenty of data whether the device is complying with the legal requirements and set up by the legal agency, whether it's insured, all that kind of information. Then we have Plus version, Cydron Plus, that's for drone operators. Now we have 2,500 operators certified by the Air Agency. Air Security Agency, and, and we have a team member working with them, and the operators need information that they can lock uh, so that they can lock and plan all flights, indicating coordinates for the flight and gathering information, not just as applications that we have now with weather information, etc., but on top of everything else, we will also provide specific information on cyber security. As part of the map, global map, we will have all those drones flying on urban areas, we will also have white lists and black lists, all those complying with requirements, physical requirements and cybersecurity requirements as well. Final product will be Pro version, Cydron Pro, for law enforcement agencies and private security agencies as well. By intercepting signals, all those drones that are have not adhered to the Cydron program, by means of sniffers and and different techniques using the radio frequencies for drones 2.45 gigahertz gigahertz sorry we can detect those flights and we can uh, act on it and send instructions such as return harm or return home sorry or all other attacks as needed all measures needed to block the operation our target market is uh, well, all four bullet points. First, citizen with this application that is free of charge will have information on what's going on with an APP. They will have a map where they can select a given drone. I would like to know what's existing, what's available, how much has been developed, how much is out in the market, anyone using it? So we've performed different tests and, and prototypes and proof of concepts where we have an app that has been developed with the whole map and through the first project, which is Cydron Basic, we can have on, up in the cloud information sent to us by an operator that it's geolocated. I mean, the, the device is geolocated, so we have lots of information. Then we've also tried out different attacks, and we've taken down these two models and smaller models. This is DJ and Phantom and Inspire One. So this first one is covered 90% of the market, and there we've seen that 95% of all those devices fly unsafely. And that's how we've tested different uh, ideas, proof of concept, and developments as well. It's been two years that we that we have been working on this project, and we feel that with the new law being passed shortly from now, we will see these uh, devices over urban areas, but I feel we all want to see them fly safely and securely.
Si sí, habías comentado que el mercado era por una parte, bueno, ciudadanos en general, por otra parte, so, eh, operadores. You said parte, citizens, operators, uh, or carriers, and then law enforcement agencies and private security agencies. This latter two groups. Has there been any kind of market validation? Have you shared these value proposition to companies in the sector and what reply did you get? What so far? Our only contact with authorities has been just merely information sharing. We've emailed them the project and we plan on scheduling several events and interviews, meetups with these uh, bodies. We thought of being part of cybersecurity groups which are being set up or have been set up in the air uh, agency and also on, through contacts with the uh, SENPIC and other critical infrastructure agencies trying to share what's good in the project. That way we can make sure that the regulation that the agency might have, uh, they might be scared and feel they don't want to give permission so that operation, operators can fly over urban areas, but through this kind of technologies, which do not only guarantee physical guarantee, um, security, but also cyber security elements. So we need to think that all those devices also take some recordings, and hence there is a thing of privacy, availability of recordings, because they might be filming over areas where an extra privacy is needed. So, as part of our agenda, we plan on um, scheduling some meetups and interviews and contacts with regulators. What about monetizing the product? Monetizing. So, first one, Cydro Basic, will be uh, free of charge for citizens. They can just download the app and have all the information as we set with them. Next version, uh, it is Cydro Plus, that will be offered initially free of charge to 2,500 operators or carriers in Spain, and we thought of globalizing the product as well. But together with that service that will be free of charge, we will have a series of audits performed or security inspections where, which are mandatory, and we will help them in their interaction with regulators so it is easier for them. Thank you very much. Bueno, pasamos al cuarto proyecto. Smartfence. Hola, yo soy Mauro Graciosi, CEO de Smartfence. So I'm Mauro Graciosi at Smartfence, CEO at Smartfence. I come from Argentina. We are 11 wonderful people working here. But before that, as information security officer, I was in charge of awareness campaigns. It was difficult to have a full coverage, good metrics, and also to prove its effectiveness. I've also realized that time and money resources were higher than expected, and year after year I had to reinvest. So I thought other people might encounter the same problems. That was it. And we made Smartfence, which is a SIS platform for awareness raising on information security, focusing on safe behaviors for users. Main components are enabling and uh, an awareness raising with interactive newsletters, 
Earth, also assessment components and for fission malware and also in order to prove efficiency and efficacy audits. The target for us and our clients would be a small and medium companies in Spain and Latin America. And the companies that are most attracted are financial, insurance and health. As for the market, this is Gartner's CBT Security Niche study. And in their year on year analysis, they see the growth is over 58%, 2014 2015. Currently, we have 240 million, that's market size, and it is expected this will stay the same up to 2018, even higher growth. With the directional growth of 1.5 billion, we meant to be partners to global providers. It did not work. We know pricing, we know in, uh, turnover and staffing and investment. But there was a lack of flexibility, and their contents had nothing to do with the idiosyncrasy that we have, at least in Latin America. Competitors were based in Latin America mainly, as we find out, and we we, with Gartner's study, we realized that we were not uh, studying properly in Spain nor in Latin America. We were lucky to get to know the product and adjust it to our market, and that's why we have adjusted our competitive edge so that it is a turnkey project. It needs to be autonomous and flexible to adjust content so that our clients need, and it integrates and automates the whole program. So there is a relation between awareness campaigns and fission and malware traps. Our business model is a B2B annual subscription, recurring income revenues, invoiced and based on the components and the number of users. Our positioning campaign or strategy is sponsoring events, blogs, and social media. That's a digital world. We reach them out through different channels, 30 of which are open, 60 prospective channels, and we have have competitive prices and high commission margins as well. We feel that it is quite an investment into marketing and the way we project ourselves. Inceva is well known in Latin America and in Spain, and for networking and consulting, otherwise that would not be achievable. We also hope this will help us get good investment, improve our sales in the market, and we have different milestones. We need to know the target market, we need to segment it, we need to know the regional needs and adapt our trade strategy. We need to have also investment proposals, that's what we want. We want to strengthen the human resources from this area and improve our trades processes. Finally, we will have two people working for four months exclusively or full time, plus all the people working from Argentina. There is a need in the market that is undergoing a heavy growth. We have the solution. We know it's it's efficacious and efficient to solve the problem, we need to believe in ourselves and we hope Intimate and the investors do as well and come with us throughout the process. In English, is it you put um, Thanks. So I followed, you follow, you covered all the criteria, different criteria, very quickly, uh, but I, I need to understand better the, the, the product, what are you looking for, with the first one, uh, I don't understand the question. The product, because I understood all the criteria, but I still don't know what the product is. El producto, el producto. What about the product okay, itself? Sí, what does it do? What does it do? Can you elaborate? So the product is a platform, software or service that is cloud-based, 
for information security, where it allocates end users a campaign that can be, for example, a training campaign or awareness raising campaign through newsletters, or maybe an assessment campaign. It can be phishing in order to measure user behaviors, malware, or ransomware behaviors, or it can also be test or service. This is all compiled together. It is stored into the platform for a given time as timed and when it is supposed to happen it happens it's done automatically by the platform and it registers everything users did if it's been training if they've opened an email or if they've gone into malware efficient traps and this is correlated for audits and reports as well Back to this question, what, what's the advantage of this product over competitors? Why would I buy your product instead of a different one? Well, yes, we remain certain that our product is better than the competitors because we can compare, we could compare over 20 products and we actually wanted to be partners. We, it was not about competing the first time around and so we realized these were two complicated products for efficient campaign the two step 20 steps were necessary we only have one step so that's one companies then those companies that have been working on it for some time they have training on one side and the simulation or drills on the other hand these are two different tools but over from different companies we have it all combined together so it's easy to correlate and see cause and consequence and then thirdly what about flexibility it's happened in Latin America and here in Spain with some partners we've had where they say every company is a different world, every region is a different world. So the products we see from the US have a product that hasn't changed in five years. We have a portfolio, but we, you can adjust contents for newsletters, training, fishing, and ransomware. So that adds extra flexibility, um, nothing you can find elsewhere. Sí, hola, buenas tardes. Eh, ¿nos podrías contar un poco qué Good evening again. What Argentina? success stories have you found in Argentina before Gracias. you came to Spain? So, uh, milestones rather. Success milestones. We were three last year. We are 11 people now. We work with the companies we are interested in. 3,500 users, that's important in Argentina. We've reached the commitment within three years. We've uh, beaten the break even. We survived. We've paid for this trip, actually, which is quite a bit, thanks to the incomes, uh, income in the company. And we have also different channels, 30 channels open. And we are selling there for a year and a half. We find that B2B sales and having so many channels, that's a success. Pasamos al proyecto número 5, Kinetic Technologies. Adelante. Now we give the floor to Kinetic Technologies, project number 5. Hello, my name is Yo Matias. I am the technical director of uh, Kinetics. It's a startup focused on digital identity and access control based on SDN. So, well, the project was born in 2009 when SDNs were created, were developed, and where we could see a technology that, well, I found a technology 
that would allow me to reach the vendor's uh, product. Then I was involved in European projects. I've also uh, took part of showed my demos in international fora, and then we decided in 2016 to start up our company and to exploit it commercially through Flownac. So now we are working with Telefonica and HP. So what is the problem? Well, the traditional approach in terms of network security has the following starting points. Often policies are followed on or based on technical parameters of the network. At the end of the day, those equipment, uh, well, networks have a low level of equipment, therefore um, we don't know about the full policy. It is also based on model of reliable segment through VLAN. And then, in the case, in the case you want to log on or to connect to the network, or if any of the devices is compromised, uh, that segment is reliable. So therefore, whatever crashes is the full segment. So we have a quite simple horizontal displacement that we see in this type of approach. As I mentioned before, lack of visibility about the elements and the policy that is being implemented. Therefore, our our proposal is FlowNAC, which is a pro solution or a proposal for network security. So therefore, only those that are authorized will have access to the network. So here we have a deployment of dynamic deployment of security policies, which are implemented on the basis of micro-segmentation, which is the trend in the market of cyber security. So these policies are high-level uh, definition policies. They are defined in the business logic, and it also allows us to base our policies on identity and services. This platform allows us to synthesize network parameters, to deploy them accordingly, and to have a channel for interacting with the network and with this status of the network. It also allows us to have full visibility at all times about the users that are being locked on, locked on and the traffic, so therefore we know firsthand about the situation of the network. Therefore, if there is any strange element uh, showing up, we will block that strange element. So we will also block any non-authorized uh, traffic or access. And at the end of the day, we, through our approach, we can specifically control whatever access to the network. Because this is based on a network approach, we give a homogeneous solution. And because of the type of segment that we are targeting, this is very much proper. Because in some environments, the end equipment are not updated, will not be updated. There are some equipment that are in the network, they are not, they've not being upgraded. So having a homogeneous solution saying this is the level of security that we can offer to our infrastructure, that's what adds value to our solution. So within the FlowNet platform, we separate our approach into components. We have the enforcing, which stays at the level of the network equipment, and then the policy definition that we took over, take over with us to the software. Well, the market segments are the corporate networks as well as industrial networks. And why SDN? SDN is the trend that networks are following. And at the end of the day, this allows us to go with Telefonica that proposes a use case. And we offer them a software. We offer Telefonica a software solution to the problem. Other type of markets that we are targeting are telecoms, the 5Gs. We have taken part in European projects. Also, industry 4.0. We undertook different uh, solutions. We also reached the OT level, and this is the team of promoters, and then the number of milestones reached so far.
Congratulations on your innovation. Well, the NIC market is quite optimized, fragmented, very many manufacturers offering solutions, global solutions, network solutions. Oh, sorry, I cannot hear your question rightly. Okay, so the NAC market is optimized. There are very many manufacturers offering uh, heterogeneous solution, network solution, offering different solutions for network access control. So and I believe uh, the technical scientific basis of your product, what is, what is your commercial strategy? How will you will compete with your product? How would you display existing vendors in the market. Well, I am the general director. Similar solutions to ours are often manufacturer solutions targeting a high range. That is to say a client, uh, so a market with a client, a client that is widespread, where they offer full solution. Because we can support ourselves in the hardware of any manufacturer, we can target a smaller market. So we are trying to enter the market through an industrial facility. So where well, they have their own manufacturers, they have their own hardware, so we provide them with the software. We provide them with the software. So that's why we are offering flexibility and we are offering this type of um, lower profile solution, so to speak. So the IoT, we are already dealing or negotiating a pilot with a couple of customers. So in OT, so that is to say when I have a network which is well controlled, well secure, when I connect myself to the IoT world, so I don't really trust the IP of the OT if you allow me to switch from a chronic to the other. That's why we are looking into the the applicability, these are simple networks that are detailed, managed, and controlled. And that's where we just uh, offer our solution. At this point in time, we have a customer who is demanding that from us. We had our product, and as I say, because it can be based on any network electronics, corporate network, as long as it is an Ethernet network, I can control it. So then what the actual demand that we had was the IT connected to the OT. Yes, you said that those solutions out there are also making progress, are being evolving. There is a vector that is offering a solution with a proprietary interface, which is evolving to a more advanced technological solution, allowing for that type of abstraction. And as for the rest of the uh, manufacturers are still maturing the solutions. So we are talking about high rank or first level events. Any customers or any experience with public administration so far? Well, not yet, not yet. So we, we know that this is applicable to corporate networks. We haven't been working with the public administrations yet. So first of all, we want to reach out some clients to grow a bit before we move into more complex markets. Considering our experience, okay, we from our experience, we are aware of the industrial world. We know the problems. We know the, how they operate, and that's our gateway. And then, of course, we will transfer. We will stream it, streamline it to other sectors. So, what about the accelerator? motivations for you to take part in this competition. So we have developers, uh, promoters, people that have accompanied us. We have grown organically. We set up our company. We grew according to our means and resources. But there came a time that to scale up, we need external push. So we just want to finish up our project to reach out uh, customers and then to find that push that will allow us to scale up.
Bueno, es el proyecto número 6. Pasamos al número... Ok, project number 7. New Rollers. Number 6 is not in the room. We'll give it some time at the end if we have the time for it. ¿Era la otra o es esta? Es la otra. Buenas tardes. Eh, Neuralers es una empresa que se dedica. Hey, good afternoon. Okay, so our company deals with artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence will be a solution to many of the problems in the future. Fraud is costing us eighty thousand dollars per year. So it is one of the main problems for insurance and financial entities. More specifically, we will be using artificial intelligence to manage insurance op um, operations to check fraudulent uh, situations or false uh, claims. So the value proposition is about contrasting fraud detection in real time in the network and also to check different behaviors in different users. We can have early uh, alerts. Accenture determines or establishes that 79% of uh, business people of insurance company consider that international uh, artificial in intelligence will uh, be a revolution in terms of the way they interact with their customers. We will be applying our technology of artificial intelligence to environments of uh, to interaction in real time and to natural language. We will be attacking a blue ocean, which is that of social media and 
interactions in the network. The advantage of artificial intelligence application to prevention is highly significant. It changes from 50 or increases uh, fraud detection between from 50 percent to 80 percent, and it also improves detection rate by 95 percent. Also, another report, Insurance Nexus London report, establishes that 72 percent of the fraud frauds. Uh, detection is achieved. So our potential clients, they are insurance companies or financial companies. Four positives in fraud are a problem for which nowadays there is no solution. When a fraud is established, when a significant amount of uh, resources is invested to detect it, often it is just an unnecessary cost because it was a false positive. We will try to introduce a revolution into this type of processes through our technology. The startups are the future for this type of entities because we offer outsourcing in the search of added value solutions by applying disruptive technologies that companies are not ready to invest because they believe that the short-term profitability is not significant. So big data is highly significant in the world of banking and insurance world. Our solution is the following, detecting false uh, events, also preventing frauds for, uh, of insurance operations. We also want to detect among insured profiles higher likeliness to make or suffer from fraud. Also detecting relevant information in the network and in social media. That's our first and foremost value. We use chatbots for customer attention to detect and eliminate false positives because our chatbots does not require human interaction to detect false positives. Our business model has been scaled up to the client's needs. So initial detection and then we sell it as software as a service. At this point in time, we can use it in cloud-based services as well as in-house solutions. This in-house deployment allows high level of scalability. Profitability ratio is highly relevant because once it is implemented and once we have a business model in place, investment is already done and then we start to benefit from the benefits that has been also been implemented with SESE. We have a deal for two projects in Andalusia. We've been selected for the Impulsa project with Zurich Santander. We have also interacted through a proposal for to detect fraud of credit cards. And we are also having conversation with Muteso, uh, Muta Madrileña because they want to detect fraud. We have competitors, however, they focus on protocols of rules and they do not offer detection through artificial intelligence where we use machine learning, deep learning and vertical development logarithms that we have created right from the scratch. So this is our competitive advantage, detecting unforeseeable patterns. Also that using our artificial intelligence chat box and natural language to predefine this area where we see such a high level of false positives. Well, okay, we have to stop here and our motivations, okay. Thank you very much. I just needed some time for this slide. So we've been applying artificial intelligence and sexually in very many fields that are very relevant for companies, but cybersecurity is very complex. Financial and insurance companies require endorsement, guarantee, reliability. Even if at this point in time we will be launching a solution in the IBM Open Store international launch, we will do it just this month because IBM trust our solutions through Watson services. If we were to apply that to insurance and financial world, that would not be good enough endorsement. Therefore, we need the endorsement, the support of an institution such as Inciva, as well as the support and the endorsement of uh, investment companies. For us, it is also very, very relevant to have an alignment with the strategic ideas of the uh, Spanish National Institute for Cyber Security. This is highly useful for society and well it will pay off all our effort.
this is a sophisticated product. Yes, this company is a spin-off of another company that is 20 years of age, who was created 10 years ago, who has been working and uh, successfully implementing artificial intelligence. This company was set up in last April, so 150,000 turnover so far. We are entering into deals with different insurance companies just to acquire relevant investments. And our shortage, our flaw is that we could not offer any guarantee in the cybersecurity field. Field. So mentors and the strategic help of Inciba will give us the endorsement that we need just to uh, offer uh, well to offer it to insurance companies. Well, in Cesa, we will be. Going, working with them in the development of the chat box for the customer service. We hope that this is also an open door for us to apply our technology in the field of cybersecurity. So, answering your question, we developed an artificial intelligence model so when we could see the pot potentiality of machine learning, we used it in different applications in the market. More specific, an institution that gave a presentation, S21SEC, requested us to execute uh, artificial intelligence uh, early detection or alert. And because of that demand, we went into the field of cybersecurity and we started our strategic tool that made us the winner of Cyber Emprender 2016 this year. Because we had other demands in terms of customer attention and natural speech, we created this spin off last April. We've been working in this field and we already have customers. Customers, because of the long standing trajectory of a previous company which created, we was created. 10 years ago. Any other questions? My understanding is that so far you don't have actual data. Oh yes, we do have uh, data. So my question is how do you compare this fraud detection method to other fraud detection methods that insurance company and other potential clients may have in place? When I discussed this with ITOR, he is the director of operations of Mutua Madrileña. We discussed that very same issue. He said, I just don't want a solution that competes with the solutions that I already have in place. I have already a department, highly qualified people, I am resolving my own problems. What I need from you is new systems to acquire information that allow me to eliminate false positive and to fight fraud. And he gave us orientation to develop this business strategy, this business model. We developed this product for the beer uh, brewer Estrella Galicia for to detect the stocks breakouts in the different geographical areas where they operate. So this analysis of network, this analysis of the user behavior in the social media and on the internet was seen as highly, highly interesting to ITOR. He asked us to develop it to detect fraud in the users that have uh, claimed to be uh, sufferers of an event and where there is no match. So we have consolidated data in other uh, businesses, in other business structures that give us reliability to offer a solution which does not compete or is not an alternative to existing. It is just an additional element that saves costs, eliminates false positives, and increases the potentiality to detect fraud so that the claims department can analyze alerts they get. So apologies for me speaking so fast, but this 10 minutes is highly stressful. So, so we didn't hear the question. 80% of the developments that we make can be reused. And actually, in the IBM Worldwide Store, a tool that we have developed for a um, Dutch multinational to uh, offer customer care, we will offer it at 80% 80, 80 of the cases with IBM buyers. When that is implemented for a client, the reuse level is very, very high because it is already an ad hoc solution that we are offering. So thank you very much for your attention. Pequeño cambio del orden.
este. Sí. Muy bien. Bueno, buenas tardes. Me dices cuando empezamos. Ah, ya ha empezado. Pues nada. Buenas tardes. Good evening. I'm here representing Cenedes. Tengo el privilegio de ser un guiri aquí, entonces. Eh. I'm also an alien here. Sorry for my accent, but my company is based in Spain. We work on encryption and data protection and privacy for uh, and make it easy for the user. So you cannot see the full slide, but we also have the support by large investor companies and prestigious institutions. We have the Ministry for Presidency, which is actually a very specific department of the ministry, but I cannot say that aloud. We also work with the European Space Agency, and we also have Keisha Capital Risk Support. We got an excellent certificate from the European Union, and we work with the armed forces as well. Can you hear me? Yes, you can, right? Good. Problem, I guess we all know what it is. Hackers and data theft. And what we are interested in is the European privacy data data privacy law and there are many companies and the cost of hacking in Europe is going up constantly so what's been proposed here companies can protect their users data by encrypting them and that's what we do so we have a solution that is already in the market that would be a first version sold out in the market as I mentioned to some administrations and next week on the 30th we will be launching the next new version that we've fully revamped because we've seen that crypto was working tech was working but we got feedback from the first users mentioning that maybe usability and look and feel could be improved so we've really cleaned it up revamped it and the new version will be marketed within a week or so and what's that this is an app both for the cell phone and the computer as well where you can secure locally all kinds of files whether these are pictures or pdfs or excel files spreadsheets any format that is proprietary for our company and it can also be shared securely maybe on dropbox people use dropbox for file sharing it is highly practical but not very secure and safe and it's american they also use we transfer it works nicely as well but again the files are sent bits by bit so you should not send any confidential files so we want things to be done easier but better protected or secured so the market is growing i feel there's no need to convince you on that this is an saas project so it's a monthly fee we have a premium account it's quite transparent and uh, so we focus on specific sectors right now we are working on the legal and defense sector and we'll start to touch upon the health sector and we have two more sectors waiting and we work with distributors as well so the international strategy would be using distributors we already had some proposals uh, both in spain and europe as well I'll go fast because you never know what's going to happen about forecasting, I mean, but this is highly scalable, generally speaking, because we do not store users' data. As for the competitive landscape, yes, there are other solutions doing part of what we do with local encryption, only local encryption, cloud-based encryption, or secure en encryption and transfer. So far, for what we've seen, we are the only option with one user, one application, and all, everything is done. As for the team, I think that's uh, the core of the company, and I have the privilege of working with highly competent people. And I feel the most difficult part was to set up the team we have now, we are 10 people plus a board advisor and we have everything covered we have crypto and cybersecurity profiles covered and uh, also android and web profiles covered as well and recently we added uxi and marketing profiles as i said before uh, we will have the new launch in a week and i don't have the slide for the advisors because uh, this is confidential but we have two 
CEOs that are part oh, at international companies that are part of our board. Let me finish by saying thank you very much. And if you need me, here I am. Pipeline and forecast seem amazing. What do you need a accelerator for? I don't trust forecasts. Actually, the marketing person added it, and I went fast through it because I find it is difficult to forecast for a startup. But there are two things I need to say. Yes, we have interesting prospects. I think you called me and I, sorry I had to leave because I had a meeting and it seemed that we would reach an agreement. That's good news. And again, as we said, we still need a little push from Inzibe. We've been working for you for three years now. We were part of CyberCamp. That was 2015. We were some of the winners and our cooperation with you has been excellent and I feel we still can benefit a great deal from it. I have quite a full team. A team that I didn't have three, four months ago when you met me, some of you, I had quite a smaller team. Things are okay in the good way, but again, there are lots of dangers along the way and all kind of advice, introduction, contacts and support. It will be highly appreciated to move on to the next stage. Again, as Ignatius said, you are well established and you have quite a growth curve. So what do you expect from an accelerator such as Incivit? Again, the curve is just forecasts. It's not the real thing that we will be out in the market on the 30th and well, we'll see what happens. Again, what we want is we have some interesting supports and we ha need to Go to some clients that find we are not mature enough. Uh, so it's been three months uh, where we've been 10 people, which is good, but still we have a long way ahead of us. And I think INSEE can support it in that regard. As for your client portfolio, you said 30 clients identified, 40 identified. Identified means they are leads or what? How many you have that are paying you now? So first version, we had three clients. Those would be companies and the pipeline you see, that's for the new version. So as we said, we have uh, interest distributors that are interested and also end users that are interested. Not uh, finalized, but almost finalized. Hi, Frederick. I have a question. As for the kind of encryption, cryptography you use, I'm not sure whether you said it fast and didn't or quick and didn't hear it. Do you use proprietary standards, maybe, or any competitive edge uh, on times or anything having to do with your product basis? Thank you for your question, because there are two things I need to mention. I think there's someone from the CDTI in the room, and we got support from CDTI, sorry, Neotech specifically, so that we can go on with our applied research and development efforts. One has to do with homomorphic. Uh, efforts and then quantum analysis. I like to say that that support, but that will not be enough to get into the market what we are looking into with our R&D efforts. But again, those items could reinforce our competitiveness and our the way we make ourselves different uh, in the short term. And so we are using algorithms, well-known algorithms, for the reasons we guys all know. It's easier to use something that has been just tested, tested and tested by thousands of hackers in the world than maybe something proprietary that could be scary. Again, as I said, algorithms are well-known and uh, have been made public. 
but the magic sauce would be the way we combine them so there is a high level of security but we wanted to be as transparent as possible for the user in order to use the system the user needs to understand nothing on cyber security crypto or keep uh, keys whether private or public png for example or pgp where you need to produce your keys and send the public but not the private key there's no need for the user to to worry about that so thank you very much so iron chip number eight Hola, buenas tardes. Hello, good afternoon, good evening. We are Jose and Yulen. We are Iron Chip and we are here to bring you Donkey, which is a security, a location-based security system. We'll skip the, the, the abstract or, or the index. Uh, the increase uh, in the use of mobile phones in places such as workstations meant that there is a breach in security. Said breach or gap has an influence on several sectors, such as the banking sector. From next year onwards, the banking sector has to comply with PSD2, where services need to be offered on the internet, and that's compulsory. And so security is important. It is a key distinguish an element for all banks. Then on corporate networks, it is more common to access intranet systems uh, in order to foster home working. So all those systems at companies are somehow compromised. Then critical infrastructures, well, there is an, a growing trend towards opening access to the internet. So we see an increase, a drastic increase in the number of attacks suffered by nuclear stations or water treatment plants. Then we have online shops and the fact that some users still mistrust online shopping. So our solution would be Donkey. Donkey, it's a security service that is location based that has an extra authentication layer. Set location It's not just based on geolocation or coordinates, but we also take into account environmental variables or, in, in, envir or, or surrounding elements such as mobile antennae, Wi-Fi beacons, or even device identifiers. Yes. So thank, thanks to Donkey, we can define safe places from where transfers or bank wires or accessing accounts can be performed. In case a user wants to have access to an account or have a transfer or transaction out from a DOM or what we call a safe place, immediately the system warns the user and letting them know that their security is compromised. Our service is fully transparent because the first time they connect, the safe place will be set up and then they will have access to their accounts in a regular way. Let me tell you that our system is highly compatible and can complement other existing authentication systems. So how are we going to bring Dunkey into the market? We will follow two different branches. First, security as service. There we have several layers, first of which would be free of charge. That way, clients would come, try it out, and see how useful and easy it is. Then, when starting trade relations, we would offer different packages based on the volume of authentication required, from basic to business. If none of the plans were ideal for the company implementing it, we would have a customized plan, and we would bargain with them at an authentication, authentication level and pricing. We also want to show it as a product because maybe companies do not want third-party companies accessing their users data so we would offer it license based with uh, annual royalties who are our competitors 
mainly two full authentication systems plus key portfolios such as Dofi or others. But we don't mean to compete against them. We want to offer an additional security la uh, layer to add uh, solidity to the application. How are we going to market it? Mainly two different marketing ways, direct and indirect channels. Directly, we want clients to approach us and understand how useful and how beneficial our solution can be. Then we also want to mediatize our product on the social media and also on the press and the radio. Our wide a range of layers from free of charge to customize means that our product is uh, eligible for all kinds of companies. If the company grows, we grow with them because our cloud-based structure is fully scalable. What are our motivations to be part of in Ziva? First, we want to invite you all to know other product to increase visibil visibility in the market. Then, we also know in Ziva. Okay, time's up. I think you should explain how the domes are secure or the so safe places. How are they more secure or safer than other places? Uh, what are you using to make it uh, safe if they were a target of an attack? Our extra security layer comes from the fact that currently mobile systems can be compromised. So this way for a user for an attacker, rather, it would be easy to get the password and the user to have access. Plus, the double uh, authentication systems are based on cell phones, so the attacker could use it as well. But by defining an area that is unknown to the attacker, first they need to have access from a known area, so the uh, user would be warned. And on top of that, the attacker would need to know not just the coordinates, latitude and longitude of the safe area, secure area, but they also need to have access to the mobile antenna on which uh, your device is connected, plus the Wi-Fi beacon, so that it's a unique area. So we are narrowing it down to an attack where the attacker needs to be in the area or near the area. That's what sets us apart from everything else, because we will be narrowing down uh, a lot the number of attackers. I think that's what's good about the product, the, 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 that's the functionality, but that's your business logic, uh, programming logic on the server or your cell phone. I don't know that about that, but how are you protecting it? How are you securing it? So all factors happen, or maybe I don't need to be there, but how do you protect it? How do you make sure they do not have access? How do you make sure that uh, if they find out, how do you know they are on your device? So on our hand, we would have all the data on a server. So uh, data are encrypted, so no one has access to them. And then the mobile phone does not need to store any information relating the dome to the user. So that way, there is no information stored on the cell phone, and it would only send when the user has access to the service. So, what about the uh, level of development so far? Have you tested out in a specific cases? Right now, we are developing the minimum viable product because this has been a market opportunity that we've only found about recently. We're working on its development, firstly for Android using Java. We haven't completed it, but we plan on finishing this BOC before 2018, where we can implement PSD2 in all financial institutions. Thank you very much.
Bueno, es el turno del noveno proyecto. Citec Digital. Number nine. Citec Digital. Sí, sí. Ajá. Sí. Vale, um, perdón, pero voy a presentar nuestro proyecto en, en inglés. Ok. Um, uh, my name is Gorgisin, um, and I am going to present you today our cybersecurity solution for financial industry, which is called DeepHound. And I am going to start with one number. Every day, 40 million hackers and cyber criminals uh, exchange information, buy and sell stolen passwords, um, personal details, uh, inside, inside, insider information in dark web. And by dark, dark web, I mean the most hidden part of the internet that is not indexed by Google and other search engines, that is not available for most of the users, and uh, uh, that cannot be accessed without special software. Um, currently, banks cannot access and use efficiently huge amount of data available in darknet. And that is exactly where, where uh, our solution steps in. DeepHound um, is, Deep is an online platform that um, uh, it's online platform for pro proactive monitoring and analysis of unstructured data in the shadow internet. So it can be viewed as some kind of Google for the hidden part of the internet, but it's, it's not only that. In fact, DeepHound is, is an advanced analytic platform uh, that uh, powered by machine learning. What it does, it does three main things. First, it collects in, uh, in information and data in the shadow web. Then it uses sophisticated algorithm to analyze this data. And then it predicts and uh, in, uh, it identifies and predicts threats. So DeepHound can protect banks and their reputation uh, by predicting threats even before they occur. Currently, with the current level of cyber threats, uh, banks can no longer rely on the standard uh, passive cybersecurity solutions. Uh, they need to develop the proactive cybersecurity capabilities. They need to move to uh, early detection and preventive actions. And DeepHound is a perfect solution for this. Um, we will be offering our solution uh, based on uh, uh, software as a service uh, subscription model. We will have uh, flexible uh, pricing uh, based on uh, um, on chosen functionality options and number of users. As, as, as an additional source of revenue, we will be offering uh, custom services like uh, cyber fraud investigations and uh, litigation support. And our go-to-market strategy will, be, uh, will rely on two main channels, uh, direct B2B sales to banks and uh, partnership uh, with uh, providers of uh, uh, forensic and uh, financial fraud investigation solutions. Now, speaking about market, market for uh, detection and, pre and prevention of financial fraud is growing rapidly, and it is projected that uh, dark net uh, focused segment of it will reach 5 billion US dollars by 2021. And we uh, uh, strongly believe that our solution, DeepHound, uh, uh, will have huge potential, uh, market potential, because it uh, solves real uh, problem, it, it solves real pain of the banks, and it has a, s a set of unique capabilities. Um, now a few words about our team. As you can see here, um, it's, it is very well balanced and professional team fully dedicated uh, to the project. All key members are MBA graduates and have many years of relevant experience. For example, Mr. Alikhanov here uh, brings many years of uh, managerial experience in financial industry, while uh, our CTO, Alexey Avramenko, is an extremely um, experienced uh, cybersecurity professional. Um, and I wanted to finish with a few words about our future plans. Um, we participate in, in uh, this program because we know 
uh, that in SIBI has great uh, cybersecurity expertise, and we believe that uh, its input will help us greatly to increase, uh, uh, to, to improve our product, and we also hope that uh, participation in this program would allow us to get access to local cybersecurity community, to investors, potential investors and potential clients in Spain, and hopefully to get necessary support to set our development center here in Spain. Thank you very much for your attention. Hi, thank you very much. Just two questions, because you mentioned that your business model is prov proven. Can you tell us um, what your turnover is and give us some references, or it's a still work in progress? References for the company, for, not for the team members. Yes, I understood. Um, okay, so, yes, it's, uh, product is not finished. It's we're only in the beginning of the, of the journey. Um, but uh, so far, what we uh, did, we uh, launched a, p a pilot in two Russian banks, uh, one of the biggest private banks in Russia. And we, after the successful pilot, we managed to charge uh, one bank with the annual fee. And it was like uh, our uh, first sale successful, and, uh, but what is really important for us at this stage is not to get uh, like revenue to rely on it, but rather to get early feedback from uh, potential customers and to adapt our product to their needs, to, 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 to learn as soon as possible uh, what, the, the, what, what features do they really need, and uh, to, to do product, uh, to build product in a way that answers their needs. And by the way, we're also planning to launch uh, in uh, pilot in Lloyds Bank from the UK. Um, there is a lot of movement around the dark web currently. I understood your project, but I didn't get, I didn't quite get the, the innovation you have. I mean, could you please elaborate a bit more? in the innovation you have? Ah, you mean what's innovative in our product? Exactly. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's actually, it's, uh, um, it's, 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 it's our product, it's a combination of uh, software and algorithms that we use to analyze web. So basically to, to give you like, in, in few words, a better picture of what our pro product is about, it's, uh, it, it's, it, it, consists of three main blocks. First, it's a, a collection of the information on the dark web. You cannot, like a person, uh, like normal person, uh, without uh, significant experience in this field, cannot access, first of all, cannot locate these uh, marketplaces and forums for cyber criminals. And then it cannot access it. And even if, if, if this person managed to access it, it probably will be detected and thrown away from this forum because there are a lot of like the numerous protection mechanisms that the like, cyber criminals are using. So that's one of our innovative parts is that we have these technologies and um, methods to get to these forums and to stay there and to, to basically to collect information. Then when we collect this information and it's stored on our servers, we, 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 then we segment and um, organize it in a database, and this is basically first block. Second block, it's analysis of this, it's search and analysis of this information, and, and it, which requires also some uh, sophisticated uh, algorithms, also proprietary and innovative algorithms that we use and that we, that we developed in-house. And then the third block, the most uh, advanced, uh, it's uh, predictive uh, functionality and uh, uh, we and this is uh, what we still have to develop in future. That's that's what we envision, but we still don't have it right now at the current stage of our product. Um, uh, given the nature of this um, um, area where your company works, uh, 
um, I was uh, curious about uh, how did you get together as a team and how did you start uh, addressing this problem? Um, how, what's the, the story behind the, the, the startup or the project? Okay, so, so basically we have uh, three uh, founders, I am one of them. Um, so, okay, so as we can see, the team is uh, quite complementary with uh, complementary skills and experience. So the story was uh, be began when, and we actually, we, three of us are actually friends. And um, uh, so the story began when Alexei, who is, uh, who is our, uh, you cannot hear it right now. So Alexei, our CTO, he brought to us the idea of, because he was working in cybersecurity field for, I don't know, for, like, since, since the very beginning, kind of, since the 90s, I'm not sure, it's quite long. So he, so he brought this idea, and uh, the, 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 the methods that it can use, yes, sorry. Where no? That's it. Proyecto número 10 en Sotest. En Sotest. Now. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I am uh, Eric Santelmo, the founder of our company, EnsoTest. In EnsoTest, we develop test uh, tools oriented to communication protocols in the power sector. We work in substations and in Control. So over the years, we've seen that there is a significant or clear evolution in the sector of a cable system with proprietary protocols that is shifting to more digital and open protocol system. Uh, well, I don't know how to fix this problem. Well, I tell you about it, okay, because we are short for time. Well, open protocols. Open protocols are clearly efficient protocols that allow uh, interpretation of uh, devices from different manufacturers, but there is a problem. They are unsecure by, def by design. So it means that if an intruder accesses the local network of a substation, has full control to control it. It doesn't even need a username or a password to control the system. So therefore, what is our proposal to fix this problem? We believe that the key element will be monitoring or surveillance of this communication in this network through ISD system of intrusion detection. Why an IDS system? Well, for two reasons. First of all, Nowadays, we are far away from having manufacturing offering us interoperable and secure solution. And also because there is a significant number of facilities and substations that do not have secure technology in field. Siemens acknowledges having 300,000 devices with the technology in place, which is a technology which is unsecure. Over time, we will manage solutions to include security and interoperation, but nowadays we are at the point in time and ideas will clearly help facility and installations to be secure up until we have the final solution. What differentiates us? We have experience in testing and validating substation 
equipment and we have developed our own technology to decode the communication protocols that are more widely used in these substations. So we have implemented that and tested that in different European and international centers. So in terms of our pilots, we propose we propose having a specific IDS for these type of facilities. An IDS that does not require configuration effort on the part of the power companies. We believe that that will be a key element for the adoption of it in this sector. So our technology has been validated in the laboratory, and now we are at the phase where we are looking into pilot projects that will uh, make power companies rely on us and then having success cases so that will open up the door to us to enter the market. Who is behind this project? Well, at this point in time, there are two of us in answer tests. My company, Javier Oces, who is an expert in web technologies. Javier takes care of data visualization in HTML5 so that users can get access or see any uh, threat in a simple manner. And myself, an expert in telecommunication and also in protocols in the power sector. And I worked in the development of the standards for automation and security. Why? would like to take part in security ventures, cyber security ventures. We come from the industrial world and we want to get in contact with experts that help us improve several aspects of uh, cyber security aspects of the product. We are looking for strategic partners for development and commercialization. We want to give visibility to our projects and of course we want to position ourselves internationally. Thank you very much to all of you. I very much apologies, my apologies for not being able to play this lecture. So now please tell us about the type of detection that you make. I understand that, well, you don't use signatures, perhaps you use them. How do you detect abnormalities? Any type of intelligence that you use for that, rules, etc. Well, substations that use that technology, they they are based on specific configuration files that allow us to create a diagram of the network and the information flow in the network. So therefore, we just don't need to create a number of rules. We just don't need the rules that conventional IDS is used to make those detection. So that whenever an element is communicating undesirably with another other. If we do not have that config file, that specific config file that is provided by the power company starting that substation, we have a technology that allows us to discover the equipment, to obtain, to gather information about their communication and to apply the logarithm to detect functionality of the network and the exchange of information taking place in the network. I don't know whether I answered your question. So therefore, you have a vision, a view of the network. But what happens if someone spoofs the uh, network? Well, because we know that that could happen with that standard in place. So we detect the connection of the initial uh, uh, client doing the supervision of the system. We will detect the connection of the second customer. And in general, attackers will try to discover our network. For that, they will send out a specific communication services and, and it configures client system does not have, so therefore do allow us to detect an unusual use of the network, therefore a cyber security threat. So who are your potential customers? We believe that our main uh, potential customer is power company. Power companies require prior certification and approval, so that's why we want to pilot projects with power companies so that we can have success cases that will open up doors to new markets. We could also work hand in hand with system integrators. So do you have an estimation about implementation in the market in the future? 
well, we don't know which will be the curve of implementation of these systems on by power companies. We know that some national power companies are already working in securing the substation, and that international regulations will be stricter and stricter in terms of intrusion detection systems. Well, the market of uh, unsecure substation is in an order of 15,000 to 20,000 uh, substations that have technologies of open protocols. A high proportion of them use this technology. This is the technology that is being implemented in substations as of today. Now, elaborating along those lines and trying to estimate the size of the markets. You mentioned Siemens as an example of a company with very many unsecure uh, equipment or with a low level of security. So if Siemens will decide to deploy your technology in the future, what is your estimations, estimations in terms of potential turnover with uh, Siemens on an annual basis. So we don't believe that Siemens is a potential customer for our project. Our IDS system, uh, while considering the technical specification of the power companies, it will be just one more requirement. We will compete against Siemens or any other vendor. We believe that in the world of IDS, so outsourced companies will have a place acting as judge for the automation and control uh, systems. Well, the order of magnitude I would like to reach out is to 100 substations in the next uh, four to five years minimum. What would be the turnover per substation? Well, the estimated turnover for each of IDS is around 2,000 or 3,000 euros of profit per equipment, depending on the industrial hardware that we use to deploy it. So our we have to add to the software the price of the hardware that depends, of course, on the requirements set out by the power company. Thank you very much to you all for your attention. Proyecto número 11, Dualogy Security. Dale a la derecha, vale. No la vale. Bueno, me dan ganas de abrazarte. No sé tu nombre, pero... <risa> Qué tensión, por Dios. Bueno, eh, supongo que muchos de aquí conoceréis... So, I'm sure that many of you are aware of this. Center for International Security it is a non-profit organization publishing a number of guidelines for organizations to uh, foster security. One of those guidelines is about the five main security controls that companies should have in place. We have realized that to fulfill four of those uh, main controls is number of tools are required. So here we are talking about inventory of assets, inventory of uh, equipment and software, also control of configurations, and also follow up on vulnerabilities. Well, the founder of our company and myself have been analyzing the internet for years. What you see in the background is the screenshot of Mr. Luca. Uh, in the end, we are specialized in IPv6 in general stack environments, and we have uh, have gave us the skills that help us uh, probe into and understand the internet. 
so there can be time that we wonder how we can help out organizations with our expertise. For that, we have decided to make an inventory of 60,000 organizations with a specific level of investment on ICTs and therefore potentially interested in buying our products. And out of these 60,000 organizations, we believe that 0.5% could be potentially interested, so we are talking about 600 organizations. We are here with you today to offer a product that offers a rating of security. That is to say, assessing the level of security and the level of the assets in the organization. We calculate the level of security, and through a web service, they can get access to that rating, immediate access to the rating through a one-shot uh, reporting or through ongoing observation. At this point in time, we are working on it, we are working on a mock-up, so we are ready to take any feedback from customers. We are analyzing the two profiles we are focusing on, a more executive profile, a more technical profile, to find out about the most useful information. And now, solution and business model. So these three columns make a reference to the three licensing models we are considering. So with 15, we, we have five uh, commercial, 15 commercial users, we will reach break even. So we have Lord, King and Emperor, Emperor for larger companies where we are talking about uh, hundred, dozens of hundreds of IPs assets. But what is most important is this. this way, as we increase the number of customers, the cost of maintenance of the infrastructure is not as high as that of increasing prospects. Well, markets. At this point in time, we are at the time of v, uh, MVP. We will have uh, sales per channel. We are already discussing that with some clients that have already shown an interest that for the potential clients, we will invite them to uh, visit us. And then in terms of competitors, well, if you well, I'm sure you are aware of Bitside, UpGuard, Security, Scorecard. So we are offering dual stack analytics. So we have experience in IPv4 and IPv6. We uh, know how to control and analyze IPv6. We also offer higher transparency in the ratings. Sometimes reports are a bit dark. We don't know how the ratings are reached. That motivation to be here is very obvious. It is a perfect timing for us to validation of our MVP, to increase our visibility, and to capture attract first customers. Well, the team founder, Fran, and uh, myself, Fran, unfortunately, cannot be uh, here with us today. We've been working on this for more than 10 years. We've been working with first rank companies. And then the uh, other founder is a uh, reference in the world of auditing and IT. He's got a, a significant commercial vision. He has helped us significantly in developing our business model, our products. Uh, Mr. Lukap, um, thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much to the jury. Next milestones, well, next milestones, MVP will hopefully will be ready in three months. And then the customers that we are already working through the channel, well, we just want to show it to them. We want to have it up and running in three months from now. Also attracting new customers. And once we have our new customers, it will be the time, the right time to take further steps. We haven't talked about internationalization. For the time being, we are focusing on getting feedback from our first customer, understand what they need, what they are looking for. We take it from there. And we will just uh, bring our strategy forward. What about funding? Are, did you, have you gotten any funding so far? No, own resources. Own resources up until now. So what we want is to have our MVP with our own resources. By the time we will have customers, we will start to have make turnover of revenue, and then we will redesign our strategy well to for further growth. Well, you mentioned 
break even uh, would be reached if you have uh, with the first 15 companies. Do, don't you require higher critical mass to for this rating to make sense from the benchmarking perspective? And therefore, what will be that critical mass? Well, the break even in terms of income. So that does not mean that we will uh, do the rating only for those 15 companies. Perhaps I should have told you more about it. We calculated the rating of 60,000 organizations that are considered to be uh, likely to be interested in our product because of the level of exposure to the internet. So the different security ratings will be made up of 60,000 so therefore, the customer will have an understanding about the level of uh, security with regard to the other customers. This is not an on-demand. So we are not doing vulnerability analysis. All the analysis that we carry out is passive analysis. Passive analysis, analytics, that's what we do. The seal that offers lots of information. So this is what bots and many attackers use for the targets, OK, to pick up the targets. So we use all that knowledge to do the assignment and to offer what well, to have the rating of those 60,000 companies. Along those lines, who are your customers? Direct uh, companies or, well, you have information from 60,000 companies that could also be of interest to government entities or any other type of entities are perhaps thinking about this type of business model. Well, at this point time, the business model is based on the first slide. We have detected that organizations do not have accessible and simple tools to control uh, the controls that we mentioned, as so that is to say, control of the inventories and assets they have on the internet, exposure on the internet to the internet. But yes, you are right. That information could be appealing, compelling to other sectors and perhaps to other interests. But for the time being, we are interested in trying it out with uh, end customers that want to have an understanding about the level of security on the internet. We have focused on SMEs, but rather than the uh, size of the company, we have selected companies based on the IT investment, uh, level of their IT, level of investment on IT. So for instance, one of the competitors focuses on vendors rating. They produce a ranking about uh, vendors of IT technology because, well, someone may be interested in knowing about the rating of security of a vendor. But for the time being, we are being focused on the pro problem that we detected, as to say, not enough tools by companies to understand the level of exposure in the internet. So that's where we have put our focus for our, our MVP. So well, your business development strategy based on advertising and social media, it's a bit surprising to me. Is it that you copy the, your competition or, well, what did you do that? Well, we would appreciate the help by Yensive in terms of accelerating our company. Well, sometimes we need uh, feedback, OK? Well, some people may be interested in us, but yes, you are right. We will have to consider that point. Thank you very much. El siguiente proyecto es Secure Kids. Okay, next project, Secure Kids. Eh, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Manuel Gómez. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Manuel Gómez. Uh, I am one of the co-founders of Secure Kids. So, well, it, uh, we are, it is well known by all of us, the wide level of use of mobile devices among kids. 
and these figures will continue to increase. At this point in time, there are more than uh, 1,000 million children with mobile devices could be beneficial for the development, but we should not overlook the risk of it. In Spain, more than 12% of kids have admitted to have been to have received cyberbullying or have contacted an unknown person through the uh, internet or received adult content through a message. But it was most worrying that it is primarily unknown by many parents. Secure Kids is a cloud-based uh, service for Android devices where parents can manage and monitor devices of their kids in a simple, clear, and intuitive manner. So that we are also committed to awareness raising in parents and to help them use these tools in a secure manner with the uh, uh, children. Well, parents installed an app in the kids' uh, de device to protect the child. We have a number of functionalities, including internet control, application control, calls control, geolocating the device, amongst others. Also, to offer quality service, we also embed that with another uh, services, security services. We also would like to highlight another service, which is international uh, or can, can be translated into different languages. It's also ready to be commercialized because our uh, payment system is ready. So our target uh, market are parents between 40 and 50 years of age will have a basic knowledge of the use of new technologies. We also have a number of key partnerships, operators, devices, distributors, and resellers, associations and organizations related to security of kids. We have a freemium model, that is to say we have a free um, system and then other paid systems. We will be adding uh, services. We will be working with Russia, Morocco, and Argentina companies. We uh, also want to produce uh, commercial statistics, and we want to reach out other sectors, such as companies and uh, schools, and we also want to work with segmented advertising. Well, this is a growing market. There is an increasing competition. Most of them have a premium model. We have a premium model. We are betting and supporting minors' privacy. We are focused on kids' security. We have the best uh, quality price ratio. And then together with the customer service, we have made us uh, be the best in terms of evolution versus our competitors. We are one of the top uh, apps, both in Google Play and in uh, other stores. Now we have more than 150 daily downloads, so uh, more than 1.7 million impressions. So well, our uh, this is a target for 2019: 30,000 euros and 1 million euro revenue. We just want to add new features, new functionalities to offer not only preventative security, but also to take action whenever uh, there is an event. So we will do that through online marketing actions and also across Spain. We also want to increase the number of reselling uh, channels, number of resellers. And well, our objective is to become the largest uh, uh, child security company. At this point in time, we have just launched our freemium model. We are at the level of uh, attracting and conversing customers. We only need, we don't need only investment, but also uh, marketing. So this will help us finish up our uh, business model to increase our skills and open up the door to new partners and new investors that will help us achieve our objectives. Thank you very much for your attention. So, last but one project, number 13, and this is cybersecurity.
Good afternoon. We are ANSYS, a company specialized in the production and development of cybersecurity products. We know that big companies have a problem in terms that they have been uh, recipients of attacks and well, even if they have cybersecurity protection in place. Well, what are we offering? What are we proposing? We are the first manufacturer of transparent firewalls with protection full range spectrum and forensic analysis. What happens with traditional uh, methods? What have they failed? Well, the technologies in some cases are obsolete. They have light databases versus our uh, database, which uses big data, where we have bigger uh, sampling of data that that leads to higher protection, higher security, and sometimes they do not, uh, classic methods do not focus on protection when they scan the network, they are not offering security, and therefore they read only 10% of uh, data package. We scan the full package, and the, the implementation is costly, whereas ours is, uh, they are fast and not as expensive, and our uh, application, our product is user-friendly. Our technology is a disruptive one. We feed ourselves with the largest cybersecurity threats. We feed that into our intelligent, intelligent motor, and then we produce the zero second. Zero second is detection and prevention of threat at zero moment. Any attack, any pattern of attack, and the derivatives can be detected before they are made and they are stopped. Business model is selling appliances, equipment, annual subscription that are upgraded on an annual basis, personalized reporting, and securization modules through satellites. The forecast and market. We will be focusing in companies with more than 500 employees. There are 5,000 companies, and in three years' time, we want to reach out 500 companies. We will start off with 15%, 35%, and 15%. So we will do that through partners, through resellers of cybersecurity services and implementers of cybersecurity solutions. Why do we want to uh, partner up with Incive? Well, we want to launch consoles to use to help implementation of RGPT to companies for so that they know where the databases and uh, social files are filtered. Also, SCADA consoles and then appliance for data centers and also uh, virtual data centers. We will validate that with Incive and then we will uh, see it in a demo and to find out about the market. So we have Enrique Doval, Jose Carlos Alvarez, our developer, Jose Luis Garcia, CRO, Fernando Rodriguez, CSO, uh, and myself, the CEO. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? If I understood you rightly, you want to sell firewalls? Well, the definition given by INSIBE is the following, transparent firewalls. So we have an IPS IP death with a big data motor and artificial intelligence. It has the capacity to stop, detect, and store data for forensic analysis. And it does that in real time. It does that in the actual equipment, and the actual machine but you are in the more complex competitive environment, which is the financial capabilities that you have to compete in such a world, in such a landscape. So we have already nine customers. We are starting this in Galicia. That's where we come from. We have started a commercialization in June. So we have sold 50,000 euros. We have a commitments at four years' time of 20,000 euros. And we have created a group of resellers. We are just reaching Madrid. We are interacting with the first, uh, well, with partners to reach 
big corporations. So it is considered to be one of the best uh, applications in the market in terms of uh, detection. We are starting, as I say, Madrid now. Next is Barcelona. We will be finding partners first in Spain and we have also received a number of offers for internalization. So we have been invited to make a demo in Asia. And so far, we have used on resources. We are looking for finance to go faster, to accelerate it. We know that the market is different. Competition is fierce. But so far, we are complementing existing available products. In the long term, the security that it stays is ours because it is more efficient. Any other questions? Is it clear enough? Or perhaps I missed out anything. We have lots of competitive advantages. But if I stop in that slide, I will, well, it could take a week. So I would like to understand which are potential clients or current clients. Well, clients could be from man large manufacturing companies to banks, but we are more focused on companies that have between 200 and 2,000 employees because, well, these companies are uh, regular buyers of cyber security system. They understand these solutions. When I sit down to speak to an IT system engineer, when I tell them what we do, they understand it and they want to try it out. However, if, you, if we approach a 50 employee company, well, it would take longer for them to understand our solution. However, they hire the technical profile of the company, they hire the level of acceptance. Larger companies have their own departments, they have resources, and they appreciate our solution the most because they have more at stake. Any other questions? Well, is it even clear about why we want them to be our accelerator? Well, it is very difficult to validate a system for data centers. We don't have a network of this kind in our small office. It is also difficult to see how we are going to help comply the GPR with our console. But that of database, we will have to take lots of samples and the same as images and videos for the to help the health companies. We have to take lots of samples, and then we also want to validate uh, smart uh, reporting made by our data uh, collector to make that 80% of the security reporting so that the resellers of services find it easier to sell our solution and prepare that intelligence. Once we have full visibility, full transparency, when we detect a new threat, we can pass that on to the different entities so that they understand and learn that there is an enemy there. So thank you very much. Muy bien, muchas gracias. Bueno, ahora tenemos que hacer un cambio de los equipos. Sí que quería... We have to make a small change. I would like to apologize because when we introduced, I introduced the jury to you, uh, I didn't see any of uh, a page. Beatriz Casado, uh, the Institute of Competitiveness of the Regional Government of Castilla León, and Germán Rodríguez from the Local Development Agency of uh, here at Leon. Leon. Cuando era joven hacía las chuletas mejor. No se me quedaba nada atrás. No fue una hoja, fue dos. Sí, ahora, ahora lo enchufo. El... Correcto. Y Concepción Galdón Sanz Pastor, director AILID Académico de Innovación del Instituto de Empresa. So, welcome and thank you very much. Okay. Es que parece que solo se ponen nerviosos los emprendedores. Pero... It seems that entrepreneurs uh, are the only ones who are anxious, but no, that's not true. All of us are anxious.
Luego una nota para los miembros del jurado, no sé si se informaron. Right, I don't know whether the members of the jury uh, uh, know that have to write down your name, family name and signature. Okay, so we will be here. Please come back in 10 minutes to sign the final minute. Este edificio de 14 plazas. Okay, this 14-story building is located in Shanghai and it was discovered as a unit that had been stealing information from organizations and from governments uh, from different countries for since 2016. It is the building of IPT1 of the Army for Liberation buildings, criminal organization, governments have been stealing, taking information for years and attacking organization, companies, and users. As we can see, very many examples such as WannaCry or Stuxnet, where we've seen that they have become more and more targeted, globalized and persistent. Unfortunately, these types of threats do not last years in time, but uh, they last for an average of 200 days. So we are trying to find a solution to resolve this problem in the first 15 days. How do we do that? We gather 300,000 of malware on a daily basis. We execute them in our sandboxes, and we get all the commitment indicators. So we import them as upgrades, so that they are imported as intelligence in the devices of our customers. And at the same time, they will report the events that will be triggered in these uh, commitment indicators. So therefore, CERTs are aware of what is happening. And the best thing is that we, because we have run them, because we have executed them, we have an analysis, an analysis that allows us to understand the behavior of the sample, the activity of it. And what is best is that we have, we instantly produce the criminal record, criminal record that we offer to our customers. So therefore, first, we gather information about the threats, uh, commitment indicators, compromise indicators, compromise indicators, and then in the first 15 days, we are in a position to identify most of the threats. Because we are a threat intelligence platform, we offer different services to export our uh, intelligence. We have uh, taxi support, stick support, Splunk. We are integrated with Jara. We also uh, work with Oxide. And the most, one of the most important uh, functionality is the Snort format that allows us to identify network behaviors, not based on an IP or a domain, but on the behavior of the data traveling the internet. Then we also, we also embedded with different, we get information from different antiviruses. If we compare Dynaflux with the rest of manufacturers, we are the only ones that gather samples and deliver uh, compromise indicators in a single process. Whereas in the case of other companies, they need at least the collaboration of the companies to do that. Our customers are SOC, SOX, and CERTs. We do that through free trials with the idea of having an annual subscription with target of uh, annual subscription of 80,000 euros. According to Bitdefender, we are talking about a market of uh, 2020 of 165 million US dollars, where we expect to have 1% of that market by 2020. 
which would mean 4.75 million revenue by 2020. The team is made up by David Santiago in charge of CMO, uh, Christian Sandoval, software development, and myself, CEO and CTO. And as an advisor, we have uh, Alejandro Sanchez Acosta, who works in Splunk. Thank you very much for your attention. So you didn't mention it, what do you expect from the accelerator of Incive? For us, it is very important to have the endorsements of Incive because our targets, our target customers are socks and certs. Incive is a uh, reference, it is a guarantee for our customers, as well as the mentoring that we may get from uh, Incive. Uh, because while well, we are not talking about any accelerator, we are talking about Incive as an accelerator of cyber security. What is the level of uh, proprietary technology that you have in your platform. We use quite a lot of uh, open source uh, software and libraries, but the core, that is to say, content generation and conversion, well, with the exception of Sandbox module, which is uh, can be replaced, okay, the rest is proprietary. So in the long term, competitive uh, uh, difference with other venture planning uh, platform that integrates open source components, how would you differentiate yourself in the mid long term? So we don't have integrated open source. We have to use open source libraries to integrate formats or to generate specific information. But the technology is proprietary in 90% of the cases, with the exception of the sandbox that can be that is replaceable. We are using a KUKO-based technology that could be replaced by any off-the-shelf homology. Uh, so of the SOX and search uh, targets that you mentioned, what is your positioning with regard to them now of today? At this point in time, in Spain, we have worked in Spain on through a trial with the main national socks. So we, well, but I, I prefer not to mention the others, well, the socks or customers we have worked with so far. In terms of feedback, well, there is a feedback we feel proud of. In Spain, there is a significant project in cyber intelligence, virus total, and one of the customers have decided not to subscribe virus to tell anymore and to make a subscription with us depending on our evolution so that's very very positive feedback we are proud of are there any other questions well thank you very much for your attention bueno muchas gracias a todos el jurado thank you very much everyone So, José Manuel, a colleague from INCIBE. So, please, would like to steal one more minute, members of the jury from you, and as for the rest, well, uh, we would like to formally close.